The Quran, the holy book of Islam, is revered by over a billion Muslims around the world. It is considered the literal word of God, Allah, as revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, over a period of approximately 23 years. This sacred text not only serves as a guide for spiritual and moral conduct, but also provides profound insights into history, law, and the human condition. Understanding the Quran involves exploring its historical context, themes, teachings, and its impact on the world. This comprehensive guide aims to unravel the layers of the Quran, offering a detailed explanation of its chapters, key messages, and its significance in the modern world. The Revelation of the Quran The Quran's revelation is one of the most significant events in the history of Islam, marking the beginning of a transformative era in the Arabian Peninsula and the world. To understand this monumental occurrence, it is essential to delve into the historical context of 7th century Arabia, the life of the Prophet Muhammad, the process of revelation, and the initial reception and preservation of the Quran. In the 7th century, the Arabian Peninsula was a land of diverse cultures and tribes, primarily dominated by polytheistic beliefs. The city of Mecca, a bustling trade hub, was home to the Kaaba, a revered sanctuary, housing numerous idols worshipped by the various tribes. Despite the prevalent idolatry, there was also a presence of monotheistic traditions among the Jews and Christians in the region. The socio-political landscape was marked by tribal conflicts, economic disparities, and a lack of centralized governance, creating an environment ripe for change. Amidst this backdrop, Muhammad ibn Abdullah was born in 570 CE into the respected Quraysh tribe of Mecca. Orphaned at a young age, Muhammad was raised by his grandfather and later by his uncle. Known for his integrity and honesty, he earned the titles of Al-Amin, the trustworthy, and Al-Sadiq, the truthful among his people. As a young man, Muhammad worked as a merchant, gaining respect and recognition for his fair dealings and trustworthy nature. At the age of 25, Muhammad married Khadija, a wealthy widow who supported him both personally and financially. The marriage was a harmonious partnership, and Khadija played a crucial role in Muhammad's life, particularly during the early years of his prophethood. Despite his successful career and stable family life, Muhammad often retreated to the cave of Hira, located on the outskirts of Mecca, to meditate and seek solace from the societal injustices and spiritual void he observed around him. It was in the cave of Hira, during one of these solitary retreats, that Muhammad received the first revelation from Allah through the angel Gabriel. This event, occurring in the year 610 CE during the month of Ramadan, marked the beginning of his prophethood. Gabriel appeared to Muhammad, commanding him to read or recite. Muhammad, who was illiterate, responded with trepidation, saying he could not read. The angel embraced him and repeated the command, Read in the name of your Lord who created, created man from a clinging substance. Read, and your Lord is the most generous, who taught by the pen, taught man that which he knew not. These initial verses, now known as the first five verses of Surah Al-Alaq, were the beginning of a revelation process that continued for approximately 23 years. The experience left Muhammad deeply shaken and confused. He returned home to Khadija, who comforted him and sought counsel from her cousin, Waraka ibn Naufal, a learned Christian scholar. Waraka confirmed that Muhammad had encountered the same divine messenger that had visited prophets before him, affirming his role as the final prophet. The revelation of the Quran was not a single event but a continuous process that spanned over two decades. It occurred in two primary phases, the Meccan period and the Medinan period. The Meccan period, 
lasting about 13 years, was characterized by shorter, more poetic verses that focused on the fundamentals of monotheism, the afterlife, and moral conduct. These early revelations aimed to establish the core beliefs of Islam, emphasizing the oneness of Allah, the importance of righteous living, and the reality of the Day of Judgment. The early years of Muhammad's prophethood were marked by secrecy and caution. Initially, he shared the revelations with close family and friends, who became the first Muslims. Among them were his wife Khadija, his cousin Ali, his close friend Abu Bakr, and his adopted son Zaid. As the message began to spread, Muhammad faced increasing opposition from the Quraysh leaders, who saw his monotheistic teachings as a threat to their traditional religious practices and economic interests linked to the Kaaba. Despite the growing hostility, Muhammad continued to preach publicly, gaining a small but dedicated group of followers. The Quraysh responded with persecution, attempting to suppress the burgeoning Islamic movement through social boycotts, torture, and economic sanctions. The believers faced severe hardships, yet their faith and resilience grew stronger. During this period, the revelations provided guidance and encouragement to the nascent Muslim community, urging them to remain steadfast in their faith and trust in Allah's ultimate justice. The stories of past prophets such as Noah, Abraham, Moses and Jesus were recounted to reinforce the message that God's truth always prevails despite opposition and adversity. In 622 CE, after enduring years of persecution, Muhammad and his followers made a pivotal migration from Mecca to Yathrib, later known as Medina. This event, known as the Hijra, marked a turning point in Islamic history and the beginning of the Islamic calendar. The Medinan period of revelation, lasting about 10 years, was characterized by longer, more detailed verses that address the socio-political and legal aspects of establishing a cohesive and just Muslim society. In Medina, the Muslim community grew rapidly, and the revelations provided comprehensive guidance on various aspects of life, including governance, social justice, family relations, and warfare. The Quranic verses from this period laid the foundation for Islamic law, Sharia, and helped shape the emerging Muslim polity. The revelations emphasized the importance of unity, mutual support, and adherence to divine principles. The process of revelation was meticulous and divinely orchestrated. Muhammad received the verses through various forms, including direct communication with the angel Gabriel, visions and inspiration during moments of reflection. The revelations often responded to specific events, questions or challenges faced by the Muslim community, providing timely and relevant guidance. To ensure the accurate preservation and transmission of the Quran, Muhammad instructed his companions to memorize the verses and record them in writing. Scribes such as Zaid ibn Thabit played a crucial role in documenting the revelations on materials like parchment, bones, and palm leaves. The Quran was compiled into a single book form after Muhammad's death under the caliphate of Abu Bakr and Uthman, ensuring its integrity and accessibility for future generations. The initial reception of the Quran was a mix of acceptance and resistance, while the early Muslims embraced its message with conviction, the Quraysh and other opposing tribes viewed it with skepticism and hostility. The transformative and revolutionary nature of the Quran challenged the existing social order, threatening the power structures and traditions of pre-Islamic Arabia. Despite the opposition, the Quran's profound impact on the hearts and minds of its followers cannot be overstated. Its eloquence, depth, and divine wisdom resonated deeply, inspiring a sense of purpose, spirituality, and commitment to justice and compassion. The Quran's teachings transcended the immediate context of 7th century Arabia, 
offering universal principles and values that continue to guide and inspire Muslims around the world. The revelation of the Quran was not merely a historical event, but a divine intervention that reshaped the course of human history. It provided a comprehensive framework for understanding the relationship between the Creator and His creation, the purpose of life, and the path to spiritual and moral excellence. The Quran's timeless message continues to illuminate the hearts of believers, offering guidance and solace in an ever-changing world. The Quran, as the holy scripture of Islam, is a text of profound complexity and depth. Its structure and composition are meticulously designed, reflecting a divine wisdom that encompasses both the spiritual and practical aspects of life. To fully appreciate the Quran, it is essential to explore its organization into surahs and ayahs, the significance of Maki and Madani surahs, the thematic arrangement, literary style, and the key figures and stories within its verses. The Quran is divided into 114 surahs, or chapters, each varying in length and theme. These surahs are further subdivided into ayahs, or verses, which total 6,236 in number. The surahs are not arranged in chronological order of revelation, but are instead organized primarily by length, with the longer chapters generally appearing at the beginning and the shorter ones towards the end. This arrangement, while seemingly non-linear, serves a greater purpose in guiding the reader through a journey of faith, law, and spirituality. Each surah is prefaced with the phrase Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, with the exception of Surah at tawbah This opening phrase sets the tone for the reader, reminding them of Allah's mercy and compassion. The surahs can be broadly categorized into Maki and Madani surahs, referring to the periods of revelation before and after the Prophet Muhammad's migration, Hijra, from Mecca to Medina. Maki surahs revealed during the early period in Mecca are generally shorter and more poetic. They focus on the core tenets of monotheism, the oneness of Allah, the afterlife, and the moral and ethical conduct expected of believers. These surahs were revealed during a time when the Muslim community was small and faced intense persecution. Thus, the themes often revolve around perseverance, the struggle against idolatry, and the promise of divine justice and reward. In contrast, the Madani surahs, revealed after the Hijra, are longer and more detailed. These chapters address the socio-political and legal aspects of building a cohesive Muslim society. As the Muslim community in Medina grew and became more established, the revelations provided guidance on governance, family law, warfare, economic transactions, and social justice. The Madani surahs reflect the practical challenges and responsibilities of managing a diverse and expanding community, offering comprehensive instructions to ensure justice, equity, and moral conduct. The thematic arrangement of the Quran is another aspect of its intricate design. While the chapters are not arranged chronologically, they are thematically connected creating a tapestry of interwoven ideas and principles. Major themes include monotheism, tawhid, prophethood, eschatology, belief in the afterlife, moral and ethical conduct, and social justice. These themes recur throughout the Quran, reinforcing the central messages and guiding believers towards a holistic understanding of their faith. Monotheism is the cornerstone of the Quranic message, the concept of Tawheed, or the oneness of Allah, is emphasized repeatedly, rejecting any form of polytheism or associating partners with Allah. This principle is foundational as it shapes the believer's worldview, their relationship with the Creator, and their interactions with creation. The Quran unequivocally declares that Allah is the sole Creator, Sustainer, and Judge of the Universe deserving of exclusive worship and devotion. 
The Quran also places significant emphasis on prophethood. It recounts the stories of various prophets, including Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus, among others. These narratives serve multiple purposes. They provide historical context, illustrate the continuity of divine guidance, and offer moral and spiritual lessons. Each prophet's story highlights different aspects of faith, resilience, and the struggle against oppression and falsehood. The Prophet Muhammad is presented as the final messenger, sealing the line of prophethood and delivering the ultimate and complete guidance for humanity. Eschatology is another major theme, with the Quran offering vivid descriptions of the Day of Judgment, Heaven, and Hell. Belief in the afterlife is a fundamental aspect of Islamic faith, serving as a powerful motivator for moral and ethical behavior. The Quran describes the Day of Judgment as a time of ultimate accountability, where every individual will be held responsible for their deeds. The righteous are promised eternal bliss in paradise, while the wrongdoers face severe consequences in hell. These descriptions are meant to instill a sense of accountability, urging believers to lead lives of piety and righteousness. The Quran's moral and ethical teachings are comprehensive, covering both personal conduct and social responsibilities. It provides guidance on various aspects of life, including honesty, kindness, justice, charity, and humility. The ethical framework of the Quran is designed to cultivate a sense of integrity and compassion, promoting a just and harmonious society. Specific instructions are given on matters such as caring for the poor and needy, treating others with respect and fairness, and maintaining family and community ties. Social justice is a recurring theme with the Quran advocating for the rights of the oppressed and marginalized. It emphasizes the importance of justice in all aspects of life, urging believers to stand against injustice and oppression. The Quranic principles of justice extend to economic transactions, family law and governance, ensuring that all members of society are treated with dignity and equity. The Quran also addresses issues such as gender equality, racial equality, and the treatment of non-Muslims, promoting a vision of inclusive and compassionate community. The literary style of the Quran is unique, characterized by its eloquence, rhythm, and profound depth. The language of the Quran is classical Arabic, and its verses are known for their linguistic beauty and rhetorical power. The Quran employs various literary devices, including metaphors, similes, parables, and repetition to convey its messages effectively. The rhythmic and melodic qualities of the Quran make it both a literary masterpiece and a powerful tool for spiritual reflection and meditation. The Quran's eloquence is particularly evident in its use of parables and allegories. These narrative techniques are employed to illustrate complex spiritual and moral truths in a relatable and impactful manner. For instance, the parable of the good tree and the evil tree in Surah Ibrahim highlights the contrast between faith and disbelief, righteousness and wickedness. Such parables engage the reader's imagination and intellect, making the abstract concepts more tangible and memorable. The Quran also contains numerous references to historical events and figures, providing both context and lessons for contemporary believers. Stories of past prophets and their communities serve as moral exemplars, demonstrating the consequences of faithfulness and disobedience. These narratives are interwoven with the Quran's theological and ethical teachings, creating a comprehensive and cohesive text that addresses both the spiritual and temporal dimensions of life. The preservation and transmission of the Quran are also remarkable aspects of its history. During the Prophet Muhammad's lifetime, the revelations were meticulously memorized and recorded by his companions. The oral tradition played a crucial role in preserving the Quran, 
with many of the Prophet's followers committing the entire text to memory. This tradition of memorization, known as hifs, continues to be a revered practice among Muslims, ensuring the Quran's accuracy and continuity across generations. In addition to oral transmission, the Quran was written down on various materials, including parchment, bones, and palm leaves. These written records were compiled into a single, authoritative text after the Prophet's death, under the leadership of the first caliphs, Abu Bakr and Uthman. This compilation process involved meticulous cross-referencing and verification, ensuring that the Quranic text remained consistent and true to the original revelations. The Uthmanic Codex, as it came to be known, became the standard text of the Quran, and copies were distributed to different regions of the Muslim world. The Quran's influence extends beyond its religious and spiritual dimensions. It has also played a significant role in shaping Islamic culture, art, and civilization. Quranic calligraphy, for instance, is a highly esteemed art form that combines aesthetic beauty with spiritual devotion. The intricate and stylized representation of Quranic verses in calligraphy adorns mosques, manuscripts, and various other cultural artifacts, reflecting the deep reverence for the divine word. Furthermore, the Quran has inspired a rich tradition of Islamic scholarship and intellectual inquiry. Scholars have devoted their lives to studying and interpreting the Quran, producing extensive commentaries, tafsir, that explore its meanings and implications. These commentaries have contributed to the development of various fields of knowledge, including theology, jurisprudence, philosophy, and science. The Quranic emphasis on seeking knowledge and understanding has also fostered a culture of learning and intellectual curiosity within the Islamic world. In conclusion, the structure and composition of the Quran are marked by a profound and intricate design that encompasses both spiritual and practical guidance. Its division into surahs and ayahs the distinction between Maki and Madani surahs, the thematic arrangement, literary style, and the inclusion of key figures and stories all contribute to its depth and richness. The Quran's timeless message continues to inspire and guide millions of believers, offering a comprehensive framework for understanding the divine, the self, and the world. Through its eloquence, wisdom, and profound insights, the Quran remains a source of spiritual enlightenment and moral guidance for humanity. The Quran, as the central religious text of Islam, is a comprehensive guide that addresses various aspects of human existence, spirituality, and morality. To fully grasp its essence, it is crucial to explore its core themes, which include monotheism, prophethood, eschatology, moral, and ethical conduct, and social justice. These themes are interwoven throughout the Quran, creating a cohesive and profound narrative that offers guidance and wisdom for believers. Monotheism, or Tawheed, is the most fundamental theme of the Quran. The concept of Tawheed emphasizes the oneness of Allah, rejecting any form of polytheism or associating partners with him. This principle is the cornerstone of Islamic faith, shaping the believer's worldview and their relationship with the Creator. The Quran repeatedly asserts that Allah is the sole Creator, sustainer and judge of the universe, deserving of exclusive worship and devotion. Verses such as say, He is Allah, who is one, Allah, the eternal refuge. He neither begets nor is born, nor is there to him any equivalent. Surah Al-Ikhlas succinctly encapsulate this doctrine. The Quran also delves deeply into the nature of Allah, describing his attributes and actions. Allah is portrayed as omnipotent, omniscient, and merciful. His mercy and compassion are emphasized as seen in the frequent invocation of his names Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, 
and our Rahim, the most compassionate. These attributes are not only meant to inspire awe and reverence, but also to assure believers of Allah's benevolence and care. The Quranic narrative presents Allah as actively involved in the world, guiding and sustaining His creation. Prophethood is another central theme of the Quran. The text recounts the stories of various prophets, highlighting their missions and the challenges they faced. Prophets such as Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus are depicted as exemplars of faith, resilience, and dedication to conveying Allah's message. Their stories serve multiple purposes. They provide historical context, illustrate the continuity of divine guidance, and offer moral and spiritual lessons. The Quran presents Muhammad as the final prophet, the seal of the prophets. His prophethood is depicted as a culmination of the prophetic tradition, bringing the complete and final revelation from Allah. The life and mission of Muhammad are central to the Quranic narrative, serving as a model for believers to emulate. The Quran frequently addresses Muhammad directly, offering him guidance, reassurance, and encouragement in the face of opposition. Eschatology, or the belief in the afterlife, is a recurring theme in the Quran. The text offers vivid descriptions of the day of judgment, heaven, and hell, emphasizing the concept of ultimate accountability. The day of judgment is portrayed as a time when all individuals will be resurrected and held accountable for their deeds. The righteous are promised eternal bliss in paradise, while the wrongdoers face severe punishment in hell. These descriptions are intended to instill a sense of accountability and urgency, motivating believers to lead lives of piety and righteousness. The Quran's eschatological teachings are intertwined with its moral and ethical guidance. Belief in the afterlife is presented as a powerful motivator for moral conduct. The Quran provides comprehensive guidance on various aspects of life, including honesty, kindness, justice, charity, and humility. It emphasizes the importance of ethical behavior in personal and social contexts, urging believers to uphold high moral standards in their interactions with others. One of the key aspects of the Quran's ethical teachings is the concept of justice. The Quranic narrative advocates for justice in all aspects of life, emphasizing that it is a fundamental attribute of Allah and a core principle of Islam. Verses such as, O you who have believed be persistently standing firm for Allah, witnesses in justice, and do not let the hatred of a people prevent you from being just. Be just. That is nearer to righteousness. And fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is acquainted with what you do. Surah Al-Ma'idah highlight the importance of fairness and equity. The Quran also addresses social justice, advocating for the rights of the oppressed and marginalized. It emphasizes the importance of caring for the poor, the orphaned, and the vulnerable. The text provides specific instructions on various social issues, including economic transactions, family relations, and community responsibilities. For example, the Quran encourages charitable giving, zakat, as a means of redistributing wealth and alleviating poverty, thus promoting social equity and cohesion. In addition to justice, the Quran emphasizes the importance of compassion and mercy in interpersonal relations. It encourages believers to treat others with kindness, forgiveness, and empathy. The ethical framework of the Quran is designed to cultivate a sense of integrity and compassion, promoting a just and harmonious society. Specific instructions are given on matters such as resolving conflicts, maintaining family ties, and fostering community solidarity. The Quran's guidance on moral and ethical conduct extends to the realm of governance and leadership. It provides principles for just and ethical governance, emphasizing the responsibility of leaders to serve their communities with integrity and fairness. The text advocates for consultation shura and collective decision-making 
highlighting the importance of accountability and transparency in leadership. The Quranic teachings on social justice also address issues such as gender equality and the treatment of non-Muslims. The text emphasizes the spiritual and moral equality of men and women, advocating for the fair treatment and rights of women. It provides specific guidelines on various aspects of family life, including marriage, divorce, and inheritance, ensuring that women's rights are protected. The Quran also encourages respectful and just treatment of non-Muslims, promoting a vision of inclusive and compassionate community. The Quran's emphasis on social justice and ethical conduct is complemented by its teachings on spirituality and worship. The text provides detailed guidance on acts of worship, including prayer, salah, fasting, psalm, pilgrimage, hajj, and charitable giving, zakat. These acts of worship are not only expressions of devotion to Allah, but also means of cultivating moral and spiritual excellence. The Quran emphasizes that true piety involves a combination of ritual observance and ethical behavior, urging believers to embody the principles of faith in their daily lives. The Quranic narrative also highlights the importance of knowledge and learning. It encourages believers to seek knowledge and understanding, both of the divine and the natural world. The text presents the pursuit of knowledge as a means of deepening one's faith and fulfilling one's responsibilities as a steward of Allah's creation. The Quranic emphasis on learning and reflection has historically fostered a rich tradition of Islamic scholarship and intellectual inquiry, contributing to various fields of knowledge, including theology, philosophy, science, and literature. The Quran's core themes are further reinforced by its literary and rhetorical style. The text employs various literary devices, including metaphors, similes, parables, and repetition, to convey its messages effectively. The rhythmic and melodic qualities of the Quran make it both a literary masterpiece and a powerful tool for spiritual reflection and meditation. The use of parables and allegories in particular helps to illustrate complex spiritual and moral truths in a relatable and impactful manner. For instance, the parable of the good tree and the evil tree in Surah Ibrahim highlights the contrast between faith and disbelief, righteousness and wickedness. The good tree, with its firm roots and fruitful branches, symbolizes the believer who is steadfast in faith and virtuous in conduct. In contrast, the evil tree, with its weak roots and barren branches, represents the disbeliever who is unsteady and unproductive. Such parables engage the reader's imagination and intellect, making the abstract concepts more tangible and memorable. The Quran also contains numerous references to historical events and figures, providing both context and lessons for contemporary believers. The stories of past prophets and their communities serve as moral exemplars, demonstrating the consequences of faithfulness and disobedience. These narratives are interwoven with the Quran's theological and ethical teachings, creating a comprehensive and cohesive text that addresses both the spiritual and temporal dimensions of life. The Quran's profound impact on the hearts and minds of its followers cannot be overstated. Its eloquence, depth, and divine wisdom resonate deeply, inspiring a sense of purpose, spirituality, and commitment to justice and compassion. The Quran's teachings transcend the immediate context of 7th century Arabia, offering universal principles and values that continue to guide and inspire Muslims around the world. The preservation and transmission of the Quran are also remarkable aspects of its history. During the Prophet Muhammad's lifetime, the revelations were meticulously memorized and recorded by his companions. The oral tradition played a crucial role in preserving the Quran, with many of the Prophet's followers committing the entire text to memory. This tradition of memorization, known as hifs, 
continues to be a revered practice among Muslims, ensuring the Quran's accuracy and continuity across generations. In addition to oral transmission, the Quran was written down on various materials, including parchment, bones, and palm leaves. These written records were compiled into a single, authoritative text after the Prophet's death, under the leadership of the first caliphs, Abu Bakr and Uthman. This compilation process involved meticulous cross-referencing and verification, ensuring that the Quranic text remained consistent and true to the original revelations. The Uthmanic Codex, as it came to be known, became the standard text of the Quran, and copies were distributed to different regions of the Muslim world. The Quran's influence extends beyond its religious and spiritual dimensions. It has also played a significant role in shaping Islamic culture, art, and civilization. Quranic calligraphy, for instance, is a highly esteemed art form that combines aesthetic beauty with spiritual devotion. The intricate and stylized representation of Quranic verses in calligraphy adorns mosques, manuscripts, and various other cultural artifacts, reflecting the deep reverence for the divine word. Furthermore, the Quran has inspired a rich tradition of Islamic scholarship and intellectual inquiry. Scholars have devoted their lives to studying and interpreting the Quran, producing extensive commentaries, tafsir, that explore its meanings and implications. These commentaries have contributed to the development of various fields of knowledge, including theology, jurisprudence, philosophy, and science. The Quranic emphasis on seeking knowledge and understanding has also fostered a culture of learning and intellectual curiosity within the Islamic world. The Quran's timeless message continues to illuminate the hearts of believers, offering guidance and solace in an ever-changing world. Through its eloquence, wisdom, and profound insights, the Quran remains a source of spiritual enlightenment and moral guidance for humanity. Its core themes, including monotheism, prophethood, eschatology, moral and ethical conduct, and social justice, form the foundation of its teachings, guiding believers towards a holistic understanding of their faith and their role in the world. In conclusion, the Quran's core themes are interwoven throughout its text creating a comprehensive and profound narrative that addresses various aspects of human existence, spirituality, and morality. The principles of monotheism, prophethood, eschatology, moral and ethical conduct, and social justice form the foundation of the Quranic message, offering timeless guidance and wisdom for believers. The Quran's literary and rhetorical style along with its emphasis on knowledge and learning, further enhances its impact, making it a powerful and enduring source of spiritual and moral guidance for humanity. The Quran, as the Holy Book of Islam, has often been discussed in relation to various fields of human knowledge, including science. The relationship between the Quran and science is a multifaceted one, encompassing interpretations of Quranic, verses related to natural phenomena. The contributions of Islamic scholars to science inspired by the Quran and modern scientific discoveries that correlate with Quranic texts. This intricate relationship has fascinated scholars, believers, and scientists alike, fostering a rich dialogue between faith and reason. Interpretations of Quranic verses related to natural phenomena have been a significant area of interest for centuries. The Quran contains numerous references to the natural world, encouraging believers to observe and reflect upon creation as a means of understanding the divine. Verses such as, Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the alternation of the night and the day, are signs for those of understanding. Surah Al-Imran urge believers to contemplate the wonders of the universe, seeing in them the signs of Allah's wisdom and power. 
One of the most cited examples of the Quran's reference to natural phenomena is its description of embryonic development. In Surah Al-Mu'minun, the Quran states, And certainly did we create man from an extract of clay. Then we placed him as a sperm drop in a firm lodging. Then we made the sperm drop into a clinging clot, and we made the clot into a lump of flesh, and we made from the lump bones, and we covered the bones with flesh. Then we developed him into another creation. So blessed is Allah, the best of creators. This detailed account of human development has been compared to modern embryology, with many seeing it as a remarkable alignment between ancient scripture and contemporary science. Similarly, the Quran's references to astronomy have been subjects of interest. For instance, the verse, It is he who created the night and the day and the sun and the moon. All heavenly bodies in an orbit are swimming. Surah Al-Anbiya has been interpreted as an indication of the celestial body's movements, which aligns with modern understanding of planetary orbits. Such verses have led some to argue that the Quran contains knowledge that was beyond the scientific understanding of its time, suggesting a divine origin. The relationship between the Quran and science is further enriched by the contributions of Islamic scholars to various scientific fields during the Golden Age of Islam, which spanned from the 8th to the 14th centuries. Inspired by the Quranic emphasis on knowledge and reflection, scholars in the Islamic world made significant advancements in mathematics, astronomy, medicine, chemistry, and physics. The works of these scholars were often grounded in their belief that studying the natural world was a means of understanding and appreciating the divine. In mathematics, figures such as Al-Khwarizmi, known as the father of algebra, made groundbreaking contributions. His works introduced the concept of the algorithm, a fundamental principle in modern computing. The term algebra itself is derived from the title of his book, Al-Kitab Al-Mukhtasar Fi Hisab Al-Jabr Wal Muqabala. Al-Khwarizmi's contributions laid the foundations for many mathematical principles used today and his work was heavily influenced by his quest for understanding the order and harmony created by Allah. In the field of medicine, scholars like Ibn Sina, Avicenna, and Al-Razi, Razis, made pioneering contributions. Ibn Sina's Canon of Medicine was a comprehensive medical encyclopedia that synthesized knowledge from various cultures and was used as a standard medical text in Europe for centuries. Al-Razi's work in identifying and treating smallpox and measles, as well as his contributions to medical ethics, were similarly groundbreaking. These scholars viewed their medical practice as a means of fulfilling the Quranic call to preserve and protect human life, reflecting the intertwining of faith and scientific inquiry. Astronomy also saw significant advancements, with scholars like Al-Batani and Al-Sufi making precise observations and calculations that corrected and refined earlier Greek models. Al-Batani's accurate determination of the solar year and the precession of the equinoxes, as well as Al-Sufi's cataloging of stars and constellations, demonstrated a profound understanding of celestial phenomena. These contributions were driven by the Quranic exhortation to observe and study the heavens as signs of Allah's greatness. In the field of chemistry, Jabir ibn Hayyan Geber, is often credited with laying the foundations of modern chemistry. His works on alchemy and the classification of substances paved the way for the development of chemical processes and laboratory techniques. Jabir's meticulous approach to experimentation and documentation reflected a systematic pursuit of knowledge inspired by the Quranic encouragement to seek understanding and wisdom. Modern scientific discoveries have also been interpreted in light of Quranic verses, fostering a dialogue between contemporary science and ancient scripture. For instance, the Big Bang Theory, 
which posits that the universe originated from a single immensely dense point, has been seen as aligning with the Quranic verse. Have those who disbelieve not considered that the heavens and the earth were a joined entity, and we separated them and made from water every living thing? Then will they not believe? Surah Al-Anbiya This verse is interpreted by some as a reflection of the scientific understanding of the universe's origin and the fundamental role of water in sustaining life. Similarly, the expanding universe theory which suggests that the universe is continuously expanding is echoed in the Quranic verse. And the heaven we constructed with strength, and indeed, we are its expander. Surah Ad-Dariyat This alignment between scientific discoveries and Quranic verses is seen by many believers as further evidence of the Quran's divine origin, containing knowledge that transcends the scientific understanding of its time. The Quran's references to the natural world and its encouragement of reflection and inquiry have inspired generations of scientists and scholars within the Islamic tradition. This rich legacy continues to influence contemporary Muslim scientists who seek to harmonize their faith with their scientific pursuits. Organizations and initiatives aimed at promoting science education and research within the Muslim world often draw upon the Quranic call to seek knowledge as a foundational principle. In addition to inspiring scientific inquiry, the Quran also provides ethical guidelines for the conduct of scientific research. It emphasizes the importance of honesty, integrity, and humility in the pursuit of knowledge. These ethical principles are crucial in ensuring that scientific advancements are used for the benefit of humanity and the preservation of the natural world, aligning with the Quranic vision of stewardship and responsibility. The Quran's relationship with science is not without its challenges and debates. Some interpretations of Quranic verses in light of modern science have been met with skepticism, particularly when seen as an attempt to retroactively fit scientific discoveries into the scripture. Critics argue that such interpretations can undermine the spiritual and theological dimensions of the Quran, reducing it to a mere repository of scientific facts. They advocate for a more nuanced approach that respects the Qur'an's primary purpose as a guide for faith and moral conduct, while also acknowledging its encouragement of knowledge and reflection. Despite these debates, the dialogue between the Qur'an and science continues to be a vibrant and dynamic field of study. It offers a unique perspective on the relationship between faith and reason demonstrating how religious beliefs can coexist with and even inspire scientific inquiry. The Quran's timeless wisdom and its call to reflect upon the natural world serve as a reminder of the interconnectedness of all knowledge, bridging the gap between the spiritual and the empirical. In conclusion, the relationship between the Quran and science is a multifaceted and enriching one. The Quran's references to natural phenomena, its influence on Islamic scholars, and its alignment with modern scientific discoveries highlight its profound and timeless wisdom. The contributions of Islamic scholars during the golden age of Islam, inspired by the Quranic emphasis on knowledge and reflection, have left a lasting legacy in various scientific fields. Modern scientific discoveries continue to be interpreted in light of Quranic verses, fostering a dialogue between contemporary science and ancient scripture. This ongoing interaction between the Quran and science exemplifies the harmonious coexistence of faith and reason, offering valuable insights and guidance for humanity. The Quran serves as the foundational text for Islamic law and ethics providing comprehensive guidance on various aspects of individual and collective life. This guidance forms the basis of Sharia, the Islamic legal system, which encompasses both personal morality and broader social and legal principles. To understand the Quranic legal system, it is essential to explore the principles of justice, equality, 
and human rights, the role of Hadith and Sunnah in Islamic jurisprudence, and the contemporary debates and interpretations surrounding Sharia. At the heart of the Quranic legal system is the principle of justice, which is repeatedly emphasized throughout the text. Justice, or Adl in Arabic, is seen as a divine attribute and a central tenet of Islamic law. The Quranic mandate for justice is clear in verses such as, O you who have believed, be persistently standing firm for Allah, witnesses in justice, and do not let the hatred of a people prevent you from being just. Be just, that is nearer to righteousness, and fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is acquainted with what you do. Surah Al-Ma'idah This verse highlights the importance of impartiality and fairness, urging believers to uphold justice even in challenging circumstances. Equality is another fundamental principle in the Quranic legal system. The Quran asserts the inherent dignity and equality of all human beings, regardless of race, gender, or social status. This is evident in verses such as, O mankind, indeed we have created you from male and female and made you peoples and tribes, that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Indeed, Allah is knowing and acquainted. Surah Al-Hujurat This verse underscores the principle of equality before God and the importance of piety and righteousness as the true measures of a person's worth. The Quran also provides specific guidelines on human rights, emphasizing the protection of life, property, and dignity. The right to life is explicitly stated in verses like, and do not kill the soul which Allah has forbidden except by right, and whoever is killed unjustly, we have given his heir authority, but let him not exceed limits in the matter of taking life, Indeed, he has been supported by the law. Surah Al-Isra This verse underscores the sanctity of human life and the stringent conditions under which the death penalty can be applied, highlighting the Quranic commitment to justice and the protection of life. Property rights are also protected in the Quran, with numerous verses addressing the ethical conduct of financial transactions. For instance, the verse O oh, you who have believed, do not consume one another's wealth unjustly, or send it in bribery to the rulers, in order that they might aid you to consume a portion of the wealth of the people in sin, while you know it is unlawful. Surah al-Baqarah condemns corrupt practices and emphasizes the importance of honesty and fairness in economic dealings. The Quranic legal system also addresses family law, providing detailed guidance on marriage, divorce, inheritance, and the rights and responsibilities of family members. Marriage is viewed as a solemn contract between two individuals with mutual rights and obligations. The verse, and they, women, have rights over their husbands, similar to those of their husbands, over them, according to what is equitable, but men have a degree of responsibility over them, and Allah is exalted in might and wise, Surah Al-Baqarah, emphasizes the reciprocal nature of marital rights and responsibilities, promoting a balanced and just family structure. Divorce, though permissible, is discouraged and regulated to ensure fairness and the protection of both parties. The verse, divorce is twice, then either keep her in an acceptable manner or release her with good treatment. Surah Al-Baqarah highlights the importance of respect and fairness in the dissolution of marriage, advocating for reconciliation and equitable treatment. Inheritance laws in the Quran are designed to ensure fair distribution of wealth among family members, with specific shares allocated to different relatives. The verse Allah instructs you concerning your children. For the male, what is equal to the share of two females? Surah An-Nisa outlines the distribution of inheritance, reflecting the social and economic context of the time. 
These laws aim to balance individual rights with the needs of the family and community, promoting social cohesion and economic stability. The role of Hadith and Sunnah is crucial in Islamic jurisprudence. While the Quran provides the fundamental principles and framework, the Hadith, recorded sayings and actions of the Prophet Muhammad, and Sunnah, the Prophet's way of life, offer detailed explanations and practical applications of Quranic teachings. The Hadith and Sunnah complement the Quran, providing context and elaboration on various legal and ethical issues. Islamic jurisprudence or fiqh is the process of interpreting and applying the Quran, Hadith and Sunnah to develop a comprehensive legal system. Fiqh involves the work of scholars who use principles of reasoning and consensus to derive legal rulings. This process has led to the development of various schools of thought within Islam, each with its own methodologies and interpretations. The primary sources of Islamic jurisprudence are the Quran and Hadith, followed by Ijma, consensus of scholars, and Qiyas, analogical reasoning. Ijma involves the collective agreement of Islamic scholars on specific issues, providing a means of maintaining continuity and consistency in legal rulings. Chiyas involves drawing analogies between contemporary issues and those addressed in the primary sources, allowing for the application of Islamic principles to new and evolving circumstances. Contemporary debates and interpretations of Sharia reflect the dynamic and evolving nature of Islamic jurisprudence. Scholars and practitioners continue to engage with the Quran and Hadith, seeking to apply Islamic principles to modern contexts. These debates often revolve around issues such as human rights, gender equality, and the role of Sharia in pluralistic societies. One of the significant areas of contemporary debate is the interpretation and application of gender equality in Islamic law. While the Quran asserts the spiritual and moral equality of men and women, traditional interpretations have often reflected the patriarchal norms of historical contexts. Modern scholars and activists advocate for re-examining these interpretations in light of the Quran's fundamental principles of justice and equality promoting gender equity in various aspects of life, including education, employment, and family law. Human rights is another critical area of discussion, with scholars examining how Islamic principles align with contemporary human rights frameworks. The Quranic emphasis on justice, dignity, and the protection of life and property provides a strong foundation for advocating human rights within an Islamic framework. However, debates continue over specific issues, such as freedom of expression, religious pluralism, and the rights of minorities with scholars seeking to balance traditional interpretations with modern human rights standards. The role of Sharia in pluralistic societies is also a topic of ongoing debate. In many Muslim-majority countries, Sharia is integrated into the legal system influencing various aspects of civil and criminal law. However, in pluralistic societies with diverse religious and cultural backgrounds, the application of Sharia raises questions about compatibility with secular legal systems and the rights of non-Muslims. Scholars and practitioners are exploring ways to harmonize Islamic principles with the principles of justice, equality, and human rights in diverse social contexts. The interpretation and application of Sharia also vary widely across different cultural and national contexts. While some countries implement Sharia as part of their legal system, others adopt a more flexible approach, incorporating elements of Sharia within a broader legal framework. These variations reflect the diverse ways in which Islamic principles are understood and applied in different cultural and historical contexts. In conclusion, the Quranic legal system provides a comprehensive framework for individual and collective life, grounded in the principles of justice, equality, and human rights. 
The role of Hadith and Sunnah in Islamic jurisprudence complements the Quran, offering detailed guidance on various legal and ethical issues. Contemporary debates and interpretations reflect the dynamic and evolving nature of Islamic law, with scholars and practitioners seeking to apply Islamic principles to modern contexts. The ongoing dialogue between traditional interpretations and contemporary challenges highlights the enduring relevance and adaptability of the Quranic legal system in addressing the needs and aspirations of Muslim communities around the world. The Quran holds a central place in the daily lives of Muslims, guiding not only their spiritual practices, but also their personal and social conduct. Its teachings permeate every aspect of a believer's life, from daily routines to significant life events, shaping their worldview and actions. To understand how the Quran influences daily life, it is important to explore the practices and rituals rooted in its teachings, the significance of daily prayers and other acts of worship, the role of the Quran in personal and community life, and the traditions of recitation and memorization. One of the most significant aspects of the Quran's influence on daily life is its guidance on practices and rituals. These include the five pillars of Islam, which are fundamental acts of worship and the foundation of a Muslim's faith and practice. The five pillars consist of the declaration of faith, shahada, prayer, salah, fasting, psalm, almsgiving, zakat, and pilgrimage, hajj. The declaration of faith, or shahada, is the first pillar and the core tenet of Islam. It is the testimony that there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. This declaration is a profound affirmation of monotheism and the acceptance of Muhammad as the final prophet. The shahada is recited daily by Muslims, reinforcing their faith and commitment to the principles of Islam. Prayer, or salah, is the second pillar and one of the most visible expressions of a Muslim's faith. Muslims are required to perform five daily prayers at specific times. Fajr, dawn, duhr, midday, asr, afternoon, maghrib, sunset, and isha, night. These prayers serve as a constant reminder of a Muslim's devotion to Allah and help maintain a spiritual connection throughout the day. The act of prayer involves specific physical postures, recitations from the Quran, and supplications, creating a disciplined and focused approach to worship. Fasting or Psalm, particularly during the month of Ramadan, is the third pillar of Islam. During Ramadan, Muslims abstain from food, drink, smoking, and marital relations from dawn until sunset. Fasting serves multiple purposes. It is an act of worship, a means of developing self-discipline and empathy for the less fortunate, and a time for spiritual reflection and renewal. The Quranic verse, O you who have believed, decreed upon you is fasting, as it was decreed upon those before you that you may become righteous. Surah Al-Baqarah emphasizes the spiritual goal of fasting. Almsgiving, or zakat, is the fourth pillar and a fundamental aspect of social justice in Islam. It requires Muslims to give a portion of their wealth, typically 2.5% of their savings, to those in need. The practice of zakat is grounded in the Quranic principles of charity and the equitable distribution of wealth. The verse, take from their wealth a charity by which you purify them and cause them increase and invoke Allah's blessings upon them. Surah at tawbah highlights the purifying and beneficial nature of zakat. The fifth pillar, the pilgrimage to Mecca or Hajj, is an obligation for all Muslims who are physically and financially able to undertake it at least once in their lifetime. The Hajj is performed during the Islamic month of Du al-Hijjah and involves a series of rituals that commemorate the actions of the Prophet Abraham and his family. The Quranic verse, and proclaim to the people the Hajj, they will come to you on foot and on every lean camel, they will come from every distant pass, Surah Al-Hajj, 
calls on Muslims to participate in this profound act of worship and unity. Beyond the five pillars, the Quran's teachings influence other daily practices and acts of worship. Recitation of the Quran, known as Tilawa, is a common practice among Muslims. Many begin their day by reciting or listening to verses from the Quran, seeking spiritual strength and guidance. The Quran's melodic and rhythmic qualities make its recitation a deeply moving and meditative experience, enhancing one's connection to the divine. Another important practice is dhikr, the remembrance of Allah. This involves the repeated recitation of specific phrases glorifying Allah, such as Subhanallah, Glory be to Allah, Alhamdulillah, All praise is due to Allah, and Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. Dhikr can be performed individually or in groups and serves as a means of maintaining a constant awareness of Allah's presence in one's life. The Quran also plays a crucial role in personal and community life. It provides moral and ethical guidance on various aspects of life, including family relations, business transactions, and social interactions. The principles of honesty, integrity, compassion, and justice are emphasized throughout the Quran, shaping the character and behavior of believers. For instance, the verse, O you who have believed, fear Allah, and speak words of appropriate justice, Surah Al-Ahzab, encourages truthful and fair communication. In family life, the Quran provides specific guidance on marriage, parenting, and the rights and responsibilities of family members. Marriage is considered a sacred contract, and the Quran emphasizes the importance of mutual respect, love, and compassion between spouses. The verse, and of his signs, is that he created for you from yourselves mates, that you may find tranquility in them, and he placed between you affection and mercy. Surah Arum highlights the divine purpose of marriage as a source of peace and harmony. Parenting is also addressed in the Quran, with a strong emphasis on the nurturing and ethical upbringing of children. The verse, and lower to them the wing of humility out of mercy and say, My Lord, have mercy upon them as they brought me up when I was small. Surah Al-Isra underscores the importance of respect and gratitude towards parents as well as the responsibility of parents to provide a loving and supportive environment for their children. In business and financial matters, the Quran advocates for fairness, transparency, and the prohibition of exploitative practices such as usury, riba. The verse, O you who have believed, do not consume usury doubled and multiplied, but fear Allah that you may be successful. Surah Al-Imran warns against unjust financial practices and promotes ethical dealings. The role of the Quran in community life is also significant. It fosters a sense of unity and brotherhood among Muslims, encouraging them to support and care for one another. The Quranic principle of enjoining what is right and forbidding what is wrong, Surah Al-Imran, emphasizes the collective responsibility of the community to uphold moral and ethical standards. This principle manifests in various community activities such as collective prayers, charitable initiatives, and social justice efforts. The traditions of Quranic recitation and memorization, known as hifs, hold a special place in Islamic culture. Many Muslims aspire to memorize the entire Qur'an, a task that requires dedication, discipline, and a deep love for the Divine Word. Those who achieve this feat are honored with the title of Hafiz, one who has memorized the Qur'an. The practice of hifs not only preserves the Qur'anic text, but also reinforces its teachings and fosters a close spiritual connection to Allah. Quranic recitation is an art form, with specific rules of pronunciation and intonation known as tajweed. The melodic and rhythmic qualities of the Quran are enhanced 
through the proper application of Tajweed, making its recitation a powerful and moving experience. Quranic competitions, where reciters demonstrate their proficiency in Tajweed, are held in many parts of the world, highlighting the importance of this tradition in Islamic culture. The impact of the Quran on education and intellectual pursuits is also profound. The Quran encourages the pursuit of knowledge and understanding, urging believers to reflect upon the natural world and the signs of Allah's creation. The verse, read in the name of your Lord who created, Surah Al-Alaq, is often cited as a foundational commandment for seeking knowledge. This emphasis on learning has historically inspired Muslim scholars to make significant contributions to various fields, including science, medicine, mathematics, and philosophy. The integration of Quranic teachings into educational curricula ensures that students not only gain religious knowledge, but also develop a well-rounded understanding of the world. Islamic schools and universities often incorporate Quranic studies alongside other subjects, fostering an environment where faith and reason coexist harmoniously. In conclusion, the Quran's influence on daily life is profound and multifaceted. Its teachings shape the spiritual practices, personal conduct, and social interactions of Muslims, providing a comprehensive framework for living a life of faith integrity, and compassion. From the five pillars of Islam to the traditions of recitation and memorization, the Quran remains a constant source of guidance, inspiration, and connection to the divine. Its principles of justice, equality, and ethical conduct permeate every aspect of a believer's life, fostering a sense of purpose and unity within the Muslim community. Through its timeless wisdom and profound insights, the Quran continues to illuminate the path for millions of believers, guiding them towards a life of righteousness and spiritual fulfillment. The Quran is not only the foundational text for the Islamic faith, but also a profound source of intellectual and spiritual exploration. To fully appreciate its depth and breadth, it is essential to understand the tradition of tafsir, or Quranic exegesis, which involves the interpretation and explanation of the Quranic text. This tradition includes an overview of classical and modern tafsir, key scholars and their contributions, a comparative analysis of different tafsir approaches, and the impact of tafsir on Islamic thought and practice. Tafsir is a critical discipline within Islamic studies that seeks to uncover the meanings and implications of the Quranic verses. The primary aim of tafsir is to elucidate the divine message and provide contextual understanding that can guide the lives of believers. The origins of tafsir trace back to the time of the Prophet Muhammad, who explained and interpreted the Quranic revelations to his companions. These explanations were based on the circumstances of revelation known as Azbab al-Nuzul, and were crucial for understanding the specific context and application of the verses. One of the earliest forms of tafsir is the tafsir bil Mathur, which relies on the hadith and sayings of the Prophet Muhammad and his companions. This type of tafsir is considered authoritative because it is based on the direct teachings and practices of the Prophet. Prominent early works of tafsir bil Mathur include those by companions such as Ibn Abbas and scholars like Mujahid Ibn Jabr, whose interpretations were highly regarded and frequently referenced by later exegetes. As the Islamic empire expanded and the need for more comprehensive interpretations grew, scholars developed the Tafsir Bil Rai, which incorporates personal reasoning and scholarly opinions. This approach allows for a broader interpretation of the text taking into account linguistic, theological, and philosophical considerations. Key figures in the development of Tafsir Bil Rai include scholars like Abu Jafar al-Tabari, whose monumental work, Tafsir al-Tabari, remains one of the most significant and widely used Tafsir compilations in Islamic scholarship. 
Al-Tabari's work is notable for its extensive use of hadith and historical context, providing a rich and detailed commentary on the Quranic verses. Another important figure in the tradition of Tafsir is Fakhr al-Din al-Razi, whose Tafsir al-Kabir is renowned for its philosophical depth and analytical approach. Al-Razi's commentary delves into various aspects of theology, metaphysics, and natural sciences, reflecting his broad intellectual interests and his attempt to reconcile religious teachings with rational inquiry. His work illustrates the dynamic interplay between faith and reason, demonstrating that the Quran can be understood and appreciated through multiple intellectual lenses. In addition to these classical scholars, modern tafsir has seen contributions from a diverse range of thinkers who have sought to address contemporary issues and challenges. Sayyid Qutbah's Fi Zilal al-Quran in the shade of the Quran is a prominent example of modern tafsir that emphasizes the socio-political dimensions of the Quranic message. Qutbah's work reflects his belief in the Quran as a revolutionary guide for achieving justice and social transformation in the modern world. His interpretations have been influential, particularly within Islamist movements, though they have also sparked significant debate and controversy. Another influential modern exegete is Muhammad Assad, whose The Message of the Quran offers a unique perspective by integrating traditional Islamic scholarship with modern linguistic and contextual analysis. Assad's work is noted for its clarity, accessibility, and its attempt to bridge the gap between classical interpretations and contemporary understanding. His translation and commentary have been widely appreciated by English-speaking Muslims and scholars for their thoughtful and nuanced approach. The comparative analysis of different tafsir approaches reveals the rich diversity within the tradition of Quranic exegesis. While tafsir Bil Mathur emphasizes the importance of prophetic traditions and historical context, tafsir Bil Rai allows for greater interpretative flexibility incorporating rational and philosophical perspectives. Other approaches, such as mystical or Sufi tafsir, focus on the esoteric and spiritual dimensions of the Quranic text. Notable works in this tradition include those by Ibn Arabi and Jalaluddin Rumi, who explore the inner meanings and symbolic aspects of the Quran, emphasizing personal spiritual transformation and direct experiential knowledge of the divine. These various approaches to tafsir have collectively enriched Islamic thought, providing multiple avenues for engaging with the Quran. The diversity of interpretations underscores the Quran's depth and complexity, allowing it to speak to different contexts, experiences, and intellectual traditions. This pluralism within tafsir reflects the dynamic and evolving nature of Islamic scholarship, where the Quran remains a living text that continues to inspire and guide believers across different times and cultures. The impact of tafsir on Islamic thought and practice is profound. Tafsir not only helps Muslims understand the Quranic text, but also shapes their beliefs, practices, and worldview. It provides the necessary tools for interpreting the Quran in ways that are relevant to contemporary issues and challenges. For instance, Tafsir has played a crucial role in addressing questions related to gender justice, human rights, and social equity, offering insights and guidance that align with the Quranic principles of justice, compassion, and dignity. In the realm of education, tafsir is an essential component of Islamic curricula, helping students develop a deeper understanding of their faith and its application in daily life. Institutions of Islamic learning, from traditional madrasas to modern universities, incorporate tafsir studies as a core discipline, ensuring that students are well-versed in the interpretative traditions and methodologies. This rigorous training equips future scholars, religious leaders, and educators with the knowledge and skills to engage with the Quranic text critically and thoughtfully. 
Tafsir also plays a significant role in the spiritual and devotional lives of Muslims. Many believers turn to Tafsir for personal study and reflection, seeking to enhance their understanding of the Quran and deepen their spiritual connection with Allah. The explanations and insights provided by Tafsir help illuminate the meanings of the verses, making the Quran more accessible and relevant to their daily lives. This personal engagement with Tafsir fosters a sense of intimacy with the Divine Word, encouraging a reflective and contemplative approach to Quranic study. Moreover, Tafsir has contributed to the intellectual and cultural heritage of the Muslim world. The rich corpus of Tafsir literature represents a vast repository of knowledge, encompassing various disciplines such as theology, jurisprudence, linguistics, history, and philosophy. This intellectual heritage has not only shaped Islamic civilization, but has also influenced other cultures and traditions through the transmission of knowledge and ideas. The scholarly exchanges and interactions facilitated by Tafsir have enriched the global intellectual landscape, demonstrating the universal appeal and significance of the Quranic message. In contemporary times, the field of Tafsir continues to evolve, with scholars exploring new methodologies and perspectives to address the changing needs of Muslim communities. The advent of digital technologies and online platforms has democratized access to Tafsir resources, enabling a broader audience to engage with the Quranic text and its interpretations. Online Tafsir databases Digital libraries and virtual study circles have made it easier for Muslims around the world to access classical and modern commentaries, fostering a global community of learners and scholars. Additionally, interdisciplinary approaches to Tafsir are gaining traction, integrating insights from fields such as anthropology, sociology and environmental studies to offer more holistic interpretations of the Quran. These approaches recognize the interconnectedness of religious, social, and environmental issues, emphasizing the relevance of the Quranic message in addressing contemporary global challenges such as climate change, social justice, and human rights. By embracing interdisciplinary methodologies, modern tafsir continues to expand its scope and impact, reflecting the Quran's enduring relevance and adaptability. In conclusion, Tafsir is a vital and dynamic tradition within Islamic scholarship that seeks to interpret and explain the Quranic text. The contributions of classical and modern exegetes, the diversity of interpretative approaches, and the impact of Tafsir on Islamic thought and practice underscore its significance in the lives of Muslims. Through Tafsir, the Quran remains a living and vibrant source of guidance inspiring believers to engage with its teachings in ways that are meaningful and relevant to their contemporary contexts. The ongoing evolution of Tafsir, facilitated by digital technologies and interdisciplinary approaches, ensures that the Quran's timeless wisdom continues to illuminate the path for future generations. The Quran's perspective on interfaith relations is deeply rooted in its principles of justice, respect, and the acknowledgement of common humanity. The text provides a comprehensive framework for understanding and interacting with people of other faiths, promoting dialogue and coexistence. This framework has historical precedence in the interactions between Muslims, Christians, Jews, and other religious communities, as well as contemporary efforts in interfaith harmony and peacebuilding. To fully appreciate the Quran's approach to interfaith relations, it is essential to explore its teachings on religious diversity, historical instances of interfaith interactions, and modern initiatives that build on these foundational principles. The Quran acknowledges the existence of religious diversity and emphasizes the importance of mutual respect and understanding among different faith communities. It recognizes the legitimacy of other Abrahamic faiths, referring to Jews and Christians as people of the book, Al Al-Kitab. This designation underscores the shared spiritual heritage and the common belief in one God. 
the verse, Indeed, those who believe and those who are Jews and Christians and Sabians, those who believe in Allah and the last day and do righteousness, will have their reward with their Lord, and no fear will there be concerning them, nor will they grieve. Surah Al-Baqarah highlights the Quranic principle that righteousness and faith in God are the ultimate criteria for salvation, transcending religious boundaries. The Quran also advocates for respectful dialogue and peaceful coexistence with people of other faiths. It encourages Muslims to engage in discussions based on mutual respect and to avoid disputes that lead to hostility. The verse, and do not argue with the people of the scripture except in a way that is best, except for those who commit injustice among them, and say, we believe in that which has been revealed to us and revealed to you, and our God and your God is one, and we are Muslims in submission to him. Surah Al-Ankabut underscores the importance of constructive dialogue and the recognition of shared beliefs. Historically, the early Muslim community, under the leadership of Prophet Muhammad, exemplified these Quranic principles through their interactions with other religious communities. One of the most notable instances is the Constitution of Medina, also known as the Charter of Medina. This document, drafted by the Prophet Muhammad, established a multi-religious and multi-tribal federation in the city of Medina. It granted religious freedom and protection to Jews, Christians, and pagan tribes, ensuring their rights and duties within the new Islamic polity. The Constitution of Medina is a landmark example of the Prophet's commitment to creating a pluralistic society based on mutual respect and justice. Another significant historical instance is the Prophet Muhammad's interaction with the Christians of Najran. In the year 631 CE, a delegation of Christian leaders from Najran visited Medina to engage in dialogue with the Prophet. This meeting was conducted with respect and civility, and it concluded with a treaty that guaranteed the protection of the Najran Christians' religious freedom and their right to self-governance. This event highlights the Prophet's approach to interfaith relations, characterized by diplomacy and respect for religious diversity. Throughout Islamic history, there have been numerous examples of peaceful coexistence and collaboration between Muslims and people of other faiths. During the Golden Age of Islam, cities like Baghdad, Cordoba, and Cairo became centers of learning and cultural exchange where scholars from different religious backgrounds worked together to advance knowledge in various fields. Jewish, Christian, and Muslim scholars collaborated on translations of scientific and philosophical texts, contributing to the rich intellectual heritage of the Islamic world. One of the most celebrated figures of this period is Maimonides, a Jewish philosopher and physician who lived in Muslim-ruled Spain and later in Egypt. Maimonides' works reflect the profound influence of Islamic philosophy and science, and his contributions were highly regarded by both Jewish and Muslim scholars. This period of intellectual cross-fertilization underscores the potential for interfaith collaboration to enrich human knowledge and understanding. In modern times, efforts to promote interfaith harmony and peace building have gained momentum, building on the Quranic principles of respect and dialogue. Organizations and initiatives dedicated to interfaith understanding work to bridge the gaps between different religious communities, fostering mutual respect and cooperation. The Common Word Initiative, launched in 2007, is one such effort that brings together Muslim and Christian leaders to explore common values and promote peace. The initiative is based on the Quranic verse, say, O people of the scripture, come to a common word between us and you, that we will not worship except Allah, and not associate anything with him, and not take one another as lords instead of Allah. Surah Al-Imran 
This call to focus on shared beliefs and values has facilitated constructive dialogue and collaboration between Muslims and Christians worldwide. Another prominent initiative is the United Nations World Interfaith Harmony Week, which was proposed by Jordan's King Abdullah II and unanimously adopted by the UN General Assembly in 2010. This week-long event, held annually in the first week of February, encourages people of all faiths to engage in activities that promote understanding, respect, and cooperation. It reflects the global recognition of the importance of interfaith dialogue in fostering peace and harmony. Educational institutions also play a crucial role in promoting interfaith understanding. Many universities and schools incorporate interfaith studies into their curricula, providing students with opportunities to learn about different religions and engage in interfaith dialogue. These programs aim to cultivate a deeper understanding of religious diversity and to equip students with the skills needed to navigate a pluralistic world. By fostering an environment of mutual respect and open-mindedness, educational institutions contribute to building a more inclusive and harmonious society. Interfaith initiatives often focus on addressing common social issues such as poverty, environmental sustainability, and human rights. By working together on these shared concerns, religious communities can demonstrate the practical benefits of interfaith collaboration. For instance, interfaith organizations often mobilize resources and volunteers to provide humanitarian aid in times of crisis, showing solidarity and compassion across religious boundaries. These collaborative efforts not only alleviate suffering but also strengthen the bonds of trust and cooperation between different faith communities. Art and culture also serve as powerful mediums for promoting interfaith understanding. Artistic expressions such as music, literature and visual arts can transcend religious and cultural differences, fostering a sense of shared humanity. Interfaith cultural events such as festivals, exhibitions, and performances provide platforms for people to celebrate their diverse traditions while recognizing the common values that unite them. These events create opportunities for meaningful interactions and build bridges between communities. Religious leaders and scholars have a pivotal role in promoting interfaith harmony. Through their teachings and public engagements, they can influence their communities to embrace a spirit of respect and cooperation. Many religious leaders actively participate in interfaith dialogues and initiatives, emphasizing the importance of peace and mutual understanding. By setting an example of respectful engagement, they inspire their followers to do the same. In conclusion, the Quran's perspective on interfaith relations is one of respect justice, and the recognition of common humanity. Its teachings provide a comprehensive framework for engaging with people of other faiths, promoting dialogue and peaceful coexistence. Historical instances of interfaith interactions, such as the Constitution of Medina and the Christian delegation from Najran, illustrate the practical application of these principles. In modern times, efforts to promote interfaith harmony and peace-building continue to build on this foundation, demonstrating the enduring relevance of the Quranic message. Through dialogue, education, collaborative efforts, and cultural exchange, religious communities can work together to create a more inclusive and harmonious world, reflecting the Quranic vision of a just and compassionate society. The Quran has profoundly influenced Islamic art and culture, leaving a lasting legacy that permeates various aspects of Muslim life. Its impact can be seen in the development of Islamic art, architecture, literature, poetry, and music, as well as in the traditions of calligraphy and manuscript illumination. The Quran's aesthetic and spiritual dimensions have inspired generations of artists and scholars fostering a rich cultural heritage. 
that reflects the beauty and depth of the Divine Word. To fully appreciate the Quran's influence on art and culture, it is essential to explore its role in these various domains and the ways in which it has shaped and enriched Islamic civilization. One of the most significant areas of the Quran's influence is Islamic art, particularly in the form of calligraphy. Calligraphy, or the art of beautiful writing, holds a special place in Islamic culture due to the Quran's emphasis on the written word. The Quranic verse, read in the name of your Lord who created, created man from a clinging substance. Read, and your Lord is the most generous, who taught by the pen, taught man that which he knew not. Surah Al-Alaq underscores the importance of writing and knowledge. As a result, the art of calligraphy became a highly esteemed and revered practice in the Islamic world. Islamic calligraphy is not merely a decorative art form. It is a means of expressing the sacredness and beauty of the Quranic text. Calligraphers devote years to mastering the intricate scripts and techniques required to create works of art that honor the Divine Word. The various styles of Arabic calligraphy, such as Kufic, Nasq, Thuluth, and Diwani, each have their unique characteristics and historical significance. Kufic, for example, is one of the oldest scripts, known for its geometric and angular forms, and was widely used in early Quranic manuscripts. Nasq, with its more cursive and fluid style, became popular for everyday writing and later Quranic copies. Manuscript illumination is another prominent aspect of Islamic art influenced by the Quran. Illuminated manuscripts often feature elaborate decorations, including intricate geometric patterns, floral motifs and vibrant colors that adorn the margins and borders of the Quranic text. These embellishments are not merely ornamental. They serve to enhance the visual and spiritual experience of reading the Quran. Illuminated manuscripts, such as the famous Blue Quran of the 9th century, showcase the exquisite craftsmanship and artistic excellence that flourished under the influence of the Quran. Islamic architecture has also been profoundly shaped by the Quranic vision of beauty and harmony. Mosques, the most significant architectural expressions of Islamic faith, are designed to create an atmosphere of reverence and awe, reflecting the majesty of Allah. The layout and features of mosques, such as the mihrab, prayer niche, minbar, pulpit, and minarets, are inspired by the Quranic emphasis on communal worship and spiritual reflection. The verse, and mention when we made the house, i.e., the Kaaba, a place of return for the people and a place of security. And take, O believers, from the standing place of Abraham, a place of prayer. Surah al-Baqarah highlights the significance of sacred spaces in Islamic worship. Famous examples of Islamic architecture, such as the Great Mosque of Cordoba, the Alhambra in Granada, and the Blue Mosque in Istanbul, demonstrate the Quran's influence on architectural design and decoration. These structures incorporate intricate tile work, arabesque motifs, and calligraphic inscriptions, creating visually stunning environments that elevate the spiritual experience of worshippers. The use of light and space in these buildings further enhances their aesthetic and spiritual impact, reflecting the Quranic themes of enlightenment and divine presence. The Quran has also played a crucial role in the development of Islamic literature and poetry. Quranic themes, stories, and imagery have inspired countless poets and writers who have drawn on its rich narrative and linguistic beauty to create works that resonate with spiritual and moral depth. The genre of Sufi poetry in particular has been deeply influenced by the Quran. Sufi poets like Jalaluddin Rumi, Hafiz, and Ibn Arabi have used their verses to explore the themes of divine love, mystical union, and spiritual enlightenment, often referencing Quranic verses and concepts. 
Rumi's Masnavi, often referred to as the Quran in Persian, is a prime example of the Quran's influence on literature. This epic poem delves into the mysteries of the divine and the human soul, weaving Quranic teachings into its exploration of love and spiritual awakening. Hafiz's Ghazals, celebrated for their lyrical beauty and profound wisdom, also reflect the Quranic themes of love, faith, and the search for divine truth. In addition to poetry, the Quran has influenced prose literature in the Islamic world. Classical works of Islamic philosophy, theology, and mysticism often begin with Quranic verses that set the tone for the subsequent discourse. These texts, such as Al-Ghazali's Ihya Ulum al-Din, the revival of the religious sciences, and Ibn Sina's Kitab al-Shifa, the Book of Healing, integrate Quranic principles with philosophical inquiry, demonstrating the Quran's role in shaping intellectual and spiritual thought. The Quran's impact extends to Islamic music, particularly in the form of Quranic recitation and devotional songs. The recitation of the Quran, known as Tilawah, is a highly revered practice that involves precise pronunciation and melodious intonation. The art of Quranic recitation, or Tajweed, requires years of study and practice, as it aims to convey the beauty and majesty of the Divine Word. Renowned reciters, such as Abdul Basit Abdus Samad and Sheikh Mishri Rashid al Afasi, have captivated audiences with their powerful and moving renditions of the Quranic text. Devotional music, including Nasheeds and Kawalis, also draws inspiration from the Quran. Nasheeds are lyrical songs that praise Allah, the Prophet Muhammad, and the teachings of Islam, often incorporating Quranic verses and themes. Kawalis, a form of Sufi devotional music, use repetitive chants and melodic rhythms to evoke spiritual ecstasy and closeness to the divine. The famous Kawali singer Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan is known for his performances that blend Quranic verses with poetic expressions of love and devotion. The influence of the Quran on art and culture is further evident in the tradition of Quranic commentary and scholarship. Tafsir, or Quranic exegesis, is a scholarly practice that seeks to interpret and explain the meanings of the Quranic text. Prominent works of Tafsir, such as those by Al-Tabari, Al-Razi, and Ibn Kathir, provide detailed insights into the linguistic, historical, and theological aspects of the Quran. These commentaries have enriched Islamic scholarship and culture, offering a deeper understanding of the Quran's teachings and their application in various contexts. The Quranic tradition of storytelling has also inspired a rich heritage of Islamic narratives and folklore. Stories from the Quran, such as those of the prophets, have been retold and adapted in various cultural forms, including literature, theater, and visual arts. These stories convey moral and spiritual lessons, reinforcing the Quranic values of faith, patience, and righteousness. The tale of Yusuf, Joseph, for example, is a popular subject in Islamic art and literature, celebrated for its themes of perseverance, forgiveness, and divine wisdom. In modern times, the Quran continues to inspire contemporary artists, writers, and musicians. Islamic art exhibitions, literary festivals, and music performances celebrate the diverse ways in which the Quran influences creative expression. Contemporary artists often explore Quranic themes through various mediums, including painting, sculpture, and digital art, creating works that resonate with both traditional and modern sensibilities. Educational institutions and cultural organizations play a vital role in preserving and promoting the Quranic cultural heritage. Museums, libraries, and research centers dedicated to Islamic art and culture offer valuable resources for studying and appreciating the Quran's influence. These institutions host exhibitions, lectures, and workshops that highlight the historical and contemporary significance of Quranic art and scholarship. In conclusion, the Quran has had a profound and far-reaching impact on Islamic art and culture, 
shaping various forms of creative expression and intellectual inquiry. From the exquisite calligraphy and manuscript illumination to the majestic architecture of mosques, the lyrical poetry of Sufi mystics, and the moving recitations of Quranic verses, the Quran's influence is evident in every aspect of Islamic civilization. This rich cultural heritage continues to inspire and enrich the lives of Muslims and people of all backgrounds, reflecting the timeless beauty and depth of the Divine Word. Through its enduring legacy, the Quran remains a source of artistic inspiration, spiritual enlightenment, and cultural unity, guiding and uplifting generations across the ages. The Quran has had a profound and lasting impact on the world, influencing not only religious beliefs and practices, but also shaping various aspects of culture, law, politics, and intellectual thought. Its reach extends beyond the Muslim world, affecting global civilizations and contributing to universal concepts of morality, justice, and human dignity. To understand the Quran's global impact, it is essential to explore its role in the spread of Islam, its influence on various cultures and societies, the efforts to translate and interpret its message, and its relevance in addressing contemporary global issues. The spread of Islam, driven by the teachings of the Quran, is one of the most significant historical phenomena. Within a century of the Prophet Muhammad's death, Islam had expanded rapidly across the Arabian Peninsula, North Africa, the Iberian Peninsula, and into parts of Asia. The Quran served as the spiritual and moral compass for these expanding communities, providing a cohesive framework for governance, social justice, and personal conduct. This expansion was not merely a military conquest. It involved the dissemination of the Quranic values of justice, compassion, and respect for human dignity, which resonated with diverse populations. The Quran's influence on various cultures and societies is evident in the rich tapestry of Islamic civilization. In regions such as the Middle East, North Africa, South Asia, and Southeast Asia, the Quran has shaped legal systems, educational institutions, and artistic traditions. Islamic law, or Sharia, derived from the Quran and Hadith, has been the cornerstone of legal systems in many Muslim-majority countries. It encompasses a comprehensive set of guidelines that govern religious, civil, and criminal matters, reflecting the Quran's emphasis on justice and ethical conduct. Educational institutions, such as madrasas and universities, have historically placed the Quran at the center of their curricula. The study of the Quran and its interpretations, alongside other sciences and arts, fostered a culture of intellectual inquiry and scholarship. Notable institutions like Al-Azhar University in Cairo and the University of al karawiyyin in Fez became renowned centers of learning, attracting students and scholars from around the world. The emphasis on knowledge and learning, inspired by the Quranic injunction to read in the name of your Lord, contributed to the advancement of various fields, including medicine, mathematics, astronomy, and philosophy. The Quran's impact on literature and poetry is profound. It has inspired a vast body of literary works that explore themes of divine love, spiritual journey, and ethical conduct. Poets like Rumi, Hafiz, and Saadi drew heavily on Quranic themes and imagery, creating timeless works that resonate with readers across cultures and generations. The lyrical beauty and moral depth of these poetic expressions highlight the Quran's ability to inspire profound artistic and spiritual insights. Art and architecture have also been deeply influenced by the Quran. Islamic art characterized by its intricate geometric patterns, calligraphy and arabesque designs, reflects the Quranic emphasis on beauty, order, and the divine presence. Mosques, with their majestic domes, minarets, and elaborate decorations, serve as architectural embodiments of Quranic principles, 
creating spaces that inspire reverence and contemplation. The Alhambra in Spain, the Blue Mosque in Turkey, and the Taj Mahal in India are iconic examples of how the Quranic vision of beauty and harmony has been translated into architectural masterpieces. Efforts to translate and interpret the Quran have played a crucial role in making its message accessible to diverse audiences. Translation of the Quran into various languages began as early as the 8th century with notable early translations into Persian, Latin, and later numerous other languages. These translations have facilitated a broader understanding of the Quran's teachings, enabling people from different linguistic and cultural backgrounds to engage with its message. The process of translation is complex, as it involves not only linguistic accuracy, but also cultural sensitivity and theological insight. Translators strive to convey the essence of the Quranic text while preserving its spiritual and literary qualities. Modern translations and interpretations continue to evolve, addressing contemporary issues and providing new perspectives on the Quranic message. Scholars and translators such as Muhammad Assad, Abdullah Yusuf Ali, and Marmaduke Pickthall have made significant contributions to English translations of the Quran, each bringing their unique insights and approaches. These translations have been instrumental in fostering a deeper understanding of Islam among non-Muslim audiences and promoting interfaith dialogue and mutual respect. The Quran's relevance in addressing contemporary global issues is increasingly recognized. Its teachings on social justice, human rights and environmental stewardship offer valuable insights for tackling the challenges of the modern world. The Quran's emphasis on justice, equality and compassion resonates with universal human values, making it a powerful resource for promoting peace and social cohesion. One of the critical areas where the Quran's teachings are particularly relevant is in the promotion of social justice and human rights. The Quran advocates for the protection of the vulnerable, the fair distribution of wealth, and the eradication of oppression and injustice. Verses such as, O you who have believed, be persistently standing firm in justice, witnesses for Allah, even if it be against yourselves or parents and relatives, Surah An-Nisa, underscore the Quranic mandate for justice and equity. These principles provide a strong foundation for addressing issues such as poverty, inequality, and discrimination in today's global society. The Quran's teachings on the environment and stewardship of the earth are also highly pertinent in the context of contemporary environmental challenges. The Quran emphasizes the interconnectedness of all creation and the responsibility of humans to protect and preserve the natural world. The verse, And it is he who has made you successors upon the earth, and has raised some of you above others in degrees of rank, that he may try you through what he has given you. Surah Al-Anam highlights the concept of stewardship and the ethical obligation to care for the environment. This perspective aligns with modern environmental ethics and sustainability efforts, encouraging responsible and sustainable use of natural resources. Interfaith dialogue and cooperation are other areas where the Quran's teachings can make a significant impact. The Quran advocates for peaceful coexistence and mutual respect among different faith communities. The verse, O mankind indeed, we have created you from male and female and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Surah Al-Hujurat calls for understanding and respect among diverse communities. This principle is the foundation for interfaith initiatives that seek to build bridges of understanding and collaboration between Muslims and people of other faiths. 
These efforts are crucial for promoting peace and harmony in an increasingly interconnected and diverse world. The Quran's influence on modern political thought and movements is also noteworthy. Islamic political movements inspired by the Quranic vision of justice and governance advocate for political systems that reflect Islamic principles. These movements emphasize the importance of ethical leadership, accountability, and the rule of law. While interpretations and implementations vary widely, the underlying goal is to create societies that uphold the Quranic values of justice, equity, and moral integrity. In the field of education, the Quran continues to inspire and shape curricula and pedagogical approaches. Islamic educational institutions, from primary schools to universities, integrate Quranic studies with modern sciences and humanities, fostering a holistic approach to learning. This integration encourages students to develop a balanced understanding of their faith in the world, equipping them with the knowledge and skills to contribute positively to society. In conclusion, the Quran's global impact is vast and multifaceted, influencing religious beliefs, cultural practices, legal systems, intellectual thought, and social values. Its teachings have shaped Islamic civilization and contributed to the broader human heritage, offering timeless principles that resonate with universal values. Through its role in the spread of Islam, its influence on various cultures and societies, its translation and interpretation, and its relevance in addressing contemporary global issues, the Quran remains a powerful and enduring source of guidance and inspiration for people around the world. Its profound insights into justice, compassion, and human dignity continue to illuminate the path toward a more just and harmonious global society.